to at sunrise. One minute before five o'clock, let's get to a few of our local headlines right now. And we start with this missing four year old Vancouver girl. Police believe she's with her mom, Anna Harrington, but Anna doesn't have custody of the girl and took off with her after a visitation last Tuesday. They may be traveling with two other girls, a seven year old and a 13 year old. So if you see them, call 911. Firefighters certainly had their hands full with this house fire west of Wilsonville last night. It happened on Lad Hill Road and there weren't any fire hydrants near that house, so crews had to shovel in water, making things really challenging. Luckily, there wasn't anyone home at the time. And people living on Portland streets have another shelter option right now. It's the Union Gospel Missions Overnight Shelter, which is staying open through the end of February. That shelter has room for 35 people in the past, that shelter has only been open when it's 32 degrees or colder outside. Those are a few of our Tuesday headlines. And now here's some of the good stuff coming up on today's Sunrise Show. I got to bring it back somehow, some way. And I decided, well, I'll be an elf. Yeah, As why a not? Human elf on the this shelf. guy is putting a twist on a Christmas tradition by bringing Elf on the Shelf to life, but he's doing it more than just for a laugh. Why a recent diagnosis inspired him to suit up. Awesome. And talk about picturesque. A ranch outside of Yamhill County isn't just a sanctuary among the trees, but a place for second chances. We take you to Five Rock Ranch and meet the people it's helping. See, I knew we had some good stuff on the show today, and we also have this message for our viewers. Today is the last day to give to the KGW Great Toy Drive. So this is a look inside our toy box right now. Nina's like, where's all the toys? They bagged them all up. So that's just a, a handful of the toys we're going to receive this year because tomorrow all the businesses, all the organizations that have been collecting toys for us, they're going to bring those toys to the station. So then the toy box fills back up again. And then we hand all those toys out on Friday to more than 130 local nonprofits. They make sure those toys get into the hands of kids for Christmas morning. If you want to donate, Lots of ways to do it, but go to KGW.com slash toy right now for all those different ways. Yeah, such a special week here at KGW. All right, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, let's check in with Rod Hill this morning because this is our last dry day, right? Yeah, of the week anyway. Let's, let's add of the week before we totally panic. Here's a look at cloudiness on the satellite. I want to point out if you see this on your app today, we don't think there's any moisture in these clouds, but they will give us kind of a filtered sun to mostly cloudy day. Right now the airport's 36, but a lot of you are freezing and frosty this morning, so it's a cold start. To the bus stop we go. Generally we go mid-30s at 8 o'clock, 43 at lunchtime. Winds are light unless you live out near the gorge of the Columbia River. Easterlies are blowing in those spots. About 46 degrees when the kids get out of school. So not as bright as it was yesterday. More on all that rain coming. That's a big deal. That's straight ahead. All right, Rod, thank you. A horrible situation developing south of Seattle this morning. 11 people are hurt after police say a guy crashed a getaway van into a Ross store. Tim Gordon is following this story from the newsroom. So Tim, three people are critically hurt. Yeah, Nina, and that includes a two year old boy who we're learning was struck while in a stroller in the crowded store last night. This happened in the Seattle suburb of Burien. About 9 p.m., the store was open late for holiday shoppers. You can see the drama unfolding there. King County deputies say this started as a shoplifting incident. A woman was allegedly stealing from the store. They say she ran out, got into a white van. The driver of that van sped off, but he circled back around, hit a parked car, then slammed right into the front of that store all the way past the registers. Again, at least 11 hurt, three critically, including that two-year-old, in a crash that created chaos. Everyone was freaking out. Everyone's pulling racks, pulling clothing off racks, and be like yanking them back, trying as hard as they could to get the baby free. A lot of people got hurt. A lot of people got hit by like fragments of whatever was flying. There's a few people cut up. Everyone's in shock, screaming, crying, calling 911. Now, the driver of the van, a 51-year-old man, was arrested for suspicion of driving while impaired by drugs. The woman was arrested on shoplifting charges and other outstanding warrant as well. And investigators still trying to figure out if anything else besides impairment caused that crash. Guys, back to you. All right, Tim, thank you very much. We're going to get to one of our other top stories this morning right now. It involves a University of Portland administrator who says he was attacked with a baseball bat, and the suspect is a former university employee. Catherine Cook's report on the story explains how this case may be connected to a sexual assault investigation on the UP campus roughly three years ago. 
At the University of Portland, staff and students are thinking of one of their own. Dr. Matthew Rigg is Associate Vice President for Student Development at the U of P. Now campus officials say Rigg is recovering with loved ones while police investigate an alleged attack on Rigg with a baseball bat. According to court documents, police responded to a 911 call Friday night. They found Rigg bleeding from the head near his home. Investigators say 52-year-old Patrick L. had waited outside Rigg's home, then hit Rigg repeatedly with a baseball bat. University officials say L is a former university employee who resigned in May of 2017. According to police reports, L was angry over a university investigation into a sexual assault claim he filed three years ago. The alleged victim was a member of L's family and a student here. University officials interviewed the alleged victim and found that the sexual assault claim lacked merit. One of those investigating officials was Dr. Rigg. After the alleged attack, doctors put 18 staples in Riggs' head. Rigg told investigators he thought L was trying to kill him. Later that night, police went to L's home near campus and arrested him for second degree assault. A spokesperson for the University of Portland declined to comment on this case because of the ongoing investigation. As for L, he is out of jail and due back in court later this month. In North Portland, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Okay, check out this next video because this is a lesson for all of us. It shows just how easy it was for a pickpocket to steal a wallet. Did you see that? That's quick, right? Wow. This happened at Andina Restaurant in Portland's Pearl District over the weekend. So watch the guy on the left. He's got a coat on and under the coat so he can kind of hide it. He reaches behind him and grabs a woman's wallet straight from out of her purse. Now we talked to her. She couldn't believe she didn't realize it was happening. Oh my God, it was horrible because he was so close and I also I couldn't feel anything. The bag is here uh, and my friends didn't see anything either. So by the time she found out her wallet was gone, then she got a look at the surveillance to make sure that she hadn't like left it at home or something. Mm. That guy had already racked up $16,000 on her credit card. If you recognize him in that trench coat and hat, call Portland Police. Governor Kate Brown wants to stop plans to widen I-5 through the Rose Quarter, at least for the time being. So the Oregonian reports Governor Brown sent a letter to the Transportation Commission asking them to look into other options to reduce traffic in that area. The governor's request comes just 24 hours before the committee is supposed to vote on a plan. Now, a lot of people are concerned about the expansion, including Mayor Ted Wheeler. He wants to know more about the environmental impact. And just last week, environmental activists demonstrated against the plan, saying they don't want more infrastructure in place that supports fossil fuels. So again, the Transportation Commission is supposed to make a decision today, and we'll let you know what they decide. Washington County health officials are reporting an uptick in the number of people diagnosed with HIV. It's the first time there's been an increase since 2014. Cases of chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis are also rising. Six out of 10 Oregonians have never been tested. Um, and so if you know your status um, and are on treatment, you're uh, less likely to transmit. And so it's, if we're wanting to move forward with actually ending HIV, uh, we need to make sure every Oregonian knows their status and gets tested. Health officials say they are expanding sexually transmitted infection testing and focusing on those with the biggest risk. Officials are using a mobile unit that offers needle exchanges and will also connect people with other services and treatment. Rod Hill just walked into the studio, but before we get to our local weather, let's tell you about communities in the Deep South where they are dealing with destruction left behind by a series of tornadoes. You can see right here the debris scattered across the area. Homes and businesses in Louisiana and Alabama destroyed. We know that twisters killed at least three people in those states. This again, video of the twister in Louisiana, which knocked down some of those homes and businesses. This morning, crews are working to clear the roads and get power back on. Tornadoes hitting the south while winter storms wreaking havoc in both the Midwest and the East Coast right now. Nine people have died in weather related crashes and the conditions on the East Coast probably not going to get any better because ice is supposed to uh, ice is expected. I should say to accumulate in the next few days around the New England states as well as the Great Lakes. A lot of those cities tried to get ready yesterday with the snow plows, the rock salt, the ice scrapers, people loading up in the grocery stores as well. Big winter storm on that side of the country. Rod, though, meanwhile, we're just mm. talking about rain this weekend for us.